Hello, my name is Fatma Tanvir and I am a Madhidia intern. In this video, I will be breaking down the basics of medical research for you and providing an easy step-by-step -step guide as to how you can begin your first research project to getting it published in a good medical journal. This video was compiled under the mentorship of Dr. Tarek. Now, before we begin, I just like to mention that this video aims to cover the very basics of research. If you're looking for detailed videos on each of the topics that we will be discussing today, you can find those on our channel as well. And I will be putting a link to that in the description below. Now, when it comes to research, there is no hard and fast rule as to exactly how you have to go about it. But for the sake of making things easier, I've broken down the entire process into a few baby steps, and I'll be walking you through each of these one by one. So question one, where do you begin? And the answer is that you begin with the end in mind. Now, this is important because a lot of people tend to begin research projects that they never really complete. And while sometimes they do have legit reasons for doing that, too often it's either because they got lazy or distracted. This is why it's so important that you define your goals clearly at the very beginning of your project. And your goal shouldn't be just to complete your project, but to actually get it published in a good medical journal. So that after all the hours and effort that you're putting in, you as well as the medical community can benefit from it to a maximum. And the easiest way to get yourself to commit to something is by doing something that you're passionate about. The more interested you are in your work, higher is the likelihood that you will do a better job at it. Next, specialty. Now you can do your research in any specialty that you like, but there's a few ad advantages of picking a specialty that you're currently working in or one that you choose to apply for. Number one, as I mentioned before, if this is something that you're interested in, odds are you're gonna execute it much better. Number two, if you're working in the specialty or you have knowledge about it, um, you, the odds are that you will have a better grip on the subject as well. And number three, and this is the most important one for students and people who plan on applying for matches, that the more relevant your research is to the specialty that you aim to apply for, the better it will look on your CV. For example, if I want to apply for a match in radiology, a research in radiology will look much better than a research in, let's say, peds or dermatology. Next. So when it comes to medical research, there is a wide variety of types that you can go for. But there's a few factors that you need to consider when you pick exactly what type of project it is that you can do right now. Number one, setting. Where are you right now? What kind of data can you access right now? How many patients do you have access to? What is the sample size that you can go for? What kind of resources do you have? How much time are you willing to invest into this project? How much knowledge do you have about the study design that you want to go for? And what journal is it that you're aiming for? For example, some journals won't publish case reports. So in that case, you'll either have to change your research type or change the journal that you're going for. Now, as I mentioned before, there is a wide variety when it comes to types of research in medicine. And I won't be going into the details in this video, but to briefly discuss them, research can be widely divided into those that are experimental and those that are observational. If there is no intervention from the investigator, let's say no exposure was assigned by the investigator, this will be an observational study. If it focuses on an individual and there is no comparison with other groups, it's going to be a descriptive study, for example, case reports. If there was comparison, it will be an analytical study. And depending on the direction, it's either a cohort, a case control, or a cross-sectional study. If exposure was assigned by the investigator, this will be an experimental study. And depending on whether or not the participants were chosen randomly or non-randomly, it will either be a randomized control trial or a non-randomized one. Now you can find detailed videos on each of these types of researches in our channel playlist, um, Research Guidance. Next topic. So this is the part where, which people find most intimidating or confusing, but if you take it easy and you take it step by step, it's not that scary at all. There's a few ways that you can choose your research topic. And the first one, if you're lucky, is stumbling upon it. 
Now you go to a board, you see a case, it's very interesting, you decide to do a case report on it. There you go, you have your topic. Number two, narrowing it down step by step. So when you pick a specialty, start thinking about what disease or what area in that field interests you the most. Then start reading up articles on that area or disease so you can find out what sort of research is ongoing right now um, regarding that area or disease and try to find gaps, questions regarding the, uh, regarding the disease that have not been answered yet. And maybe this is where you can base your research project and your research question. And number three, brainstorming. This is where you put your best foot forward and your creative hats on. Let your imagination run wild. Ask questions that you think need answers and perhaps you can provide these answers in your research. Next, journal. So as I mentioned before, when you put in so much effort and time into a project, it's only fair that it gets published in a journal that looks good on your CV, that helps the medical community because it has a good reach. And the best way of finding out if a journal is good enough is by um, looking at whether or not it's indexed. And what an index journal basically means is that, is that it's listed in a database, for example, PubMed. Now PubMed is a search engine, think of Google, but for research articles. And if, an, if a journal is indexed, it means it has a good standing. Um, some other points, if a journal is double-blinded, which means the author and the reviewer's identities are concealed from one another, and this helps to decrease bias. If the journal is peer-reviewed, which means that uh, your article will be reviewed by other medical professionals before it's sent forward for evaluation. And impact factor, which is also very important. So this is basically the frequency with which the average article in a journal has been cited in a particular year or over two years. And the higher is the impact factor, the better reach and the better standing a journal has. So look for journals that have a good impact factor. And next, of course, specialty. So if you plan to, let's say, publish a research in neurosurgery, go uh, and try finding a journal in neurosurgery instead of one, you know, in internal medicine. And here's a tip. If you're finding a hard time locating a journal for your research, um, take a few keywords from your research, put them on PubMed, click search. This is going to open up a number of articles that are similar to yours. And you can just go over what journals they're published in and this can help you narrow it down. Next, biostatistics. So biostats is the application of statistical principles to questions and problems in medicine, public health, or biology. And a good grip on biostats is necessary for any type of medical research that you decide to go for. Um, it's more important in the analytical types. Now there's a few softwares that make it very easy for you to perform, perform all of these analyses and um, biostatistical calculations. And one of the most coveted ones is SPSS, or Statistical Package for the Social Sciences. Now, a lot of people um, tend to do online tutorials or even courses, and some people even hire statisticians um, in their college or in their hospitals to do this work for them. But I think if you do an online course or if you watch a few videos on SPSS, you can get a good grip on it. And once again, if there's any topic in biostats that you find confusing, you can go and check out our playlist, Biostatistics Series, and um, this will help you out. Next, actually coming down to writing down your research. Now, most researches have a few elements to them, and let me just go over them. The first one is the abstract. Now, this is the outline, or let's say a summary of your entire research. And most abstracts are available freely. So it's kind of like a trailer to your research. Next is introduction. And this is where you discuss the degree of the problem that you're investigating. You present your research question and your hypothesis. Next is materials and methods. This is where you talk about the population um, uh, that is involved in your research, the subjects, the sample size, the sampling techniques that you're going to be going for, how you're taking all your measurements, and how you plan to carry out your analysis. 
Now, results. This is where you talk about the outcome and where you can throw in tables and flowcharts to keep things interesting. Discussion is where you interpret and describe the significance of your findings. And you let people know how these are important and how they add up to already existing studies. Conclusions. This is where you summarize all your main points and you state the significance of your results. And of course, at the end, all the references that you've used throughout your research need to be um, written as well. And um, two softwares that are very commonly used are EndNote and Menly. Uh, and um, you can also look up other softwares as well. Now, here's a tip as well. Um, if you want to brush up on your writing, you can consult the book, Elements of Style. So now it comes to publishing. So um, as I mentioned before, try making a list of journals that you can try to aim for at the very beginning. And the advantage of doing this at the very beginning rather than the end is the second point mentioned over here, author instructions. So every journal tends to have a unique set of author's instructions for you. And this is how they want you to format your research, how you want to go about the how they want you to go about the writing process. And if you give this a look and follow it while writing, you will be able to avoid a lot of unnecessary editing at the very end. So it's good to take a look at this before rather than after writing your article. Uh, next, some journals are free, some are paid. Now you can find a lot of good journals which are free. So you won't have to pay anything to get your article published and I would recommend you look these up. Corresponding author, this is the person from your team who is going to be um, sending in your article and going to be in correspondence with the editorial team of the journal. All the instructions once again are present on the website so it won't be anything difficult. And next, be patient. Now, different journals have different publishing times. Some will publish an article in four months, some will take six, some will take a year, and um, some will even send it back quite a few times for you to edit, review, and resubmit. And some will, of course, reject it. In that case, take up your work, take a good critique, brush it up, make it better, and send it back to the same journal or try sending it to another one. And that brings us to conclude. Now, um, something that I'd like to leave you with is that, as I mentioned before, research involves commitment. So this is going to involve you spending a lot of your time and a lot of effort on this project. So try making sure that it's not just something that looks good on your CV, but something that you actually enjoy doing. Make sure it's not just plain cake, but the best cake you've ever tasted. Thank you for watching. See you next time.